I'm standing here with Jane Shatley and at Mupon, and we're in Dublin right now, where just outside these doors, they're about to have a big press conference and gather interviews from as many as perhaps a hundred witnesses who saw something in the skies over Erath County on the 8th of January. Uh, can, what can you tell us that you know so far? Well, we're down here uh, to do, uh, try to uh, meet the folks that have uh, witnessed this to be able to ascertain what they did in fact see. We're down here try to um, sort of pull the wheat from the chaff, if you will, to try to find out exactly what they saw. Uh, we're not making really any conclusions at this point. We really have to analyze the data uh, once we've had the chance to interview all your um, I know that this, um, as, I, as one of my uh, state section director, uh, Ken Cherry and I talked about last night, that this is perhaps the uh, most uh, significant mass sighting that we've had in the country since the uh, Phoenix Lights in 1997. Now, would this be considered a UFO flap? Um, no, because the UFO flap is really uh, multiple sightings over a number of days, weeks, and months. This is a, a single mass sighting, is what we call this. And that's where you have uh, corroborating witnesses from different points of view that have uh, good credibility within the community that have all come forward and said, this, we do want to make sure that this information gets out. Now, there was a skeptic that appeared on Larry King last night who yes. said uh, that this was perhaps uh, a case of superior mirage or perhaps if there were some military aircraft dropping flares in the area. Uh, is that a possibility in this case or is that unlikely? Well, you, you know, it depends. I haven't had a chance to, to sit down with uh, with anybody except for Steve Allen. And he, he and I have talked briefly and he seemed to think that um, that is a very uh, remote possibility. Not having any of the data yet, it's really hard to make any conclusions one way or the other. We need to really find that out. So, you know, that's for me, that's the most important thing. Now, one thing that stands out is the, the skeptic last night continually claimed that the witnesses were not qualified, trained observers. Well, how much training do you need to know or need to have to be able to make a reasonable judgment about what you're seeing? Well, you know, we're all human beings and we're all a product of our experiences. Uh, some are more qualified than others. But we've all seen things, uh, certainly in the night sky, that are just lights. But when things happen or when they cite something that's completely out of the ordinary, um, I would suggest to you that uh, most everybody are, uh, that has seen something like this would in fact feel compelled because it is so far outside their realm of experience to at least uh, let somebody know. In fact, um, based upon some of the preliminary information uh, and, and the fact that it was so close that the object that they saw was very close, uh, within a mile to two miles of, of where some of the particular witnesses have, were on, that um, obviously this is something that's outside their experience level. So, while you can't discount what, they, what, what the, the gentleman said by Simon Larry King, I would suggest also to say that they, um, that, you know, any reasonable person seeing something like this wouldn't in fact be compelled to, to say, hey, this is way outside my environment. I don't know what this is. We need to investigate this. Very good. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. You bet.